The next command I want to teach you is polygons. Now polygon right underneath the rec right here. Now the first question it asks you in the command window is enter number of sides. So for this, let's go ahead and make a five-sided figure. So we'll type in five, enter. And then it says specify center of polygon. Well, we want to choose the center of this circle for the first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure center is chosen. And then I'm going to hover over the circle. And you can see the orange circle at the center of the circle showing up. And if I click there, that's the center of the polygon that I want to create. Now, at the top here, you can see it says A slash C. This is a shorthand version of at corners. Now, when we're talking about at corners, we mean inscribed. So for this particular polygon, we're going to draw the shape inscribed within the circle, which means that the corners of the polygon are going to hit the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this option. And so now you can see when I drag this out, my mouse is at the corner of the polygon. So if I go and I select this point right here, there is my five sided figure. Each point hitting the circle. Now the next one we're going to do is the same exact polygon five sided figure except that we're going to use the at flats, which we call circumscribed. So AF stands for at flats, and that means the polygon will be outside of the circle. So let's go ahead and click on polygon and choose the number of sides. For this one, we're going to keep the five. So hit enter. Now we want to choose the center of the circle. So we hover over the line on the circle and you can see the orange circle in the center of the circle show up. And so now we want to pick circumscribed about the circle. So now you can see that the mouse is at the flat sides of the, of the polygon instead of at the corners. And if I click right at the same spot, you can see the difference between inscribed and circumscribed is where the polygon is in relation to the circle. The last polygon I'm going to show you is going, we'll just still keep a five sided polygon. So we'll just hit enter. And, but it says specify center of polygon or edge. We are going to create a polygon using the edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to define how long one of these edges are and it'll create create the polygon accordingly. So I click on edge and so it says specify per first endpoint of edge. So I'm going to click on this to this. And so what we've defined is how long this side of the polygon is. The next thing we're going to talk about is move and copy. When you want to move an object, let's say we have a circle here. This circle, we need to move this over a certain amount. This is the move command. And we can click on that and then it says move, select objects. You select the object that you want to move. And then once you've selected all of the objects you want to move, you hit the space bar or enter. And then you specify the base point. Well, the base point is a point that you want to use as the part that you grab onto. So in this case, I'm going to grab onto the center of the circle. So I'm going to make sure I turn on the center snap and when I hover over my circle, you can see that the snap shows up on the center of the circle. And now I can move this and I grabbed it from the center of the circle. So let's say that we want to move it specifically one inch to the right. 
what we could do is we could type in at one less than sign zero. So what that should do is it should move us over one inch at the angle of zero. All right, and you can see that it moved over slightly. Now if we wanted to move this object to another point, let's say that we have a line here and we want to move that same circle from the endpoint at this line to the endpoint on the other end of the line. We go to move, we select the circle, we hit spacebar, enter, or right click. We grab the point where we want to grab the circle and we can move it to a point using the snap to another point. Now copy works much the same way. When you copy something, however, the original stays where it started and you get a second version when you click. So now we have two circles. It kind of works like a stamp, so you can continue clicking. You can also use copy using the polar coordinates. So if I say, if I want the same circle five inches above the existing circle, I can type in at five less than 90 and then hit enter and I'll get another circle five inches above that. The next command we're going to talk about is array. Now you can see when you click on the arrow next to this icon, you have three types of arrays. We have a rectangular array, a path array, and polar array. For the purposes of this lesson, we are only going to look at rectangular array and polar array. Let's start with polar array. With polar array, we can take an object such as a circle, and we can make additional copies of the circle in a specific pattern. So if we go to polar array, we select, it starts out, read down here, it says select objects, spacebar or enter, and now it says specify center point of the array or base point or axis of rotation. So I'm going to pick a point down here as the center point. And so now you can see I've created a total of six circles around this point. Okay. Now what if I wanted more than six? I could change it here at the top. I could change this to 10. And if I hit enter, it will add additional circles. Now I can also change the degree in which this rotates this around. So if I want this to only fill half the circle, I can change this from 360 to 180. And now I have the same 10 circles, but only filling up 180 degrees. So now let's say we want to take our circle and we're going to close the array when we're finished, when we're happy with it. And that'll stay there. So now let's take a, a rectangle. So create a rectangle from here to here. And we want to create a rectangular array. It's, as you can see, it says right here, select object. So I'm going to select my rectangle. Now I'm finished selecting my object, so I hit spacebar or enter. And you can see now it's creating an array, a pattern. There we go. So currently this array is four across and three up. Now we can change that. We can change this to so that it has four rows and it will add an additional row. This is good for filling in areas with uh, multiple items that are in a regular pattern. 
Now, if you want to change the directions of these, you can, and the distance between them, you can change the numbers here. So if we change this to 18 to maybe, we'll change it to 30, you can see that the distance between them gets greater. I can also change this to negative 30. And it will switch directions. The next thing we're going to talk about is mirror. Mirror is used to take something that you've drawn and make an exact duplicate mirror copy of it. So this works well when you have a complex drawing that you need to draw a mirror image of. So it's something that's very symmetrical, but it's complex. So what you do is, let's say we have this drawing that has and so we have this interesting shaped object, and what we want is this exact same object on the opposite side of this mirror line. So what we do is we go to the mirror command, and we select all the objects that we would like to mirror. We, once we've selected all of our objects, we hit spacebar or the enter key, or right click. And then what we want to do is we want to click on the endpoints of the mirror line. So we're going to hit enter. And what we have is a mirror image of the object. Next command that we're going to be looking at is fillet. Now fillet is used to create a rounded edge where there is currently a sharp edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle. And we're going to make some of these corners rounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to where it says fill it. And if you read down here at the bottom, it says select first object or undo polyline, radius, trim, or multiple. What I want is radius. So I'm going to click on this word, or I can just type in R, the blue letter there. I can type in that R and hit enter, and I can get the same command. So now it says specify fillet radius. So I want to have this one inch. So I'm going to hit 1, enter, and then I can click. So now it says select first object. This line is my first object. Now it says select second object. And I click on this second object, and it takes that corner, and it turns it into a rounded edge. You can even do this when the lines are not touching. So let's say I have this line and this line that come fairly close to each other, but they don't actually touch. So what I can do is I can click fill it, and I want to hit R for radius, one inch, and then I click my first line, my second line, and it creates a fillet between those two lines. The next command I'm going to be talking about is chamfer. Chamfer is similar to fillet. Chamfer creates a angled edge on a rectangular object. So if we start with this corner I've drawn here, we can come up to chamfer. And now it says select first line or undo polyline, distance, angle, trim, method, or multiple. We want distance. Specify first chamfer distance. All right, so first chamfer, let's say I want it to be one inch in this direction and a half inch in this direction. 
So what I'm going to first do is type in 1, hit enter, then 0.5, enter, and now it's important that I pick this one as my first one because I want this one to be the one inch, and then second, pick this one to be the half inch. Now you can also use chamfer to chamfer multiple edges of a polyline. We are going to chamfer all of these corners at the same time. So we go to chamfer and we're going to hit P for polyline, P for polyline, D for distance, one inch is fine, so one, enter, and then we select the polyline. And if you notice, it chamfered all of the four corners all in the same operation.